The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Tuesday, Tuesday, October 24th, and it's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for the day as we continue a discussion with persons and members of the visually impaired community. Um, I have about three guests who's joining me via Zoom, and we're going to be talking about their youth branch and information about the Blind School at the Salvation Army. Um, on the line, hopefully, I have Jameen Brown, who's the president of this association, also Whitney Adley, who I spoke to last week, who's assistant secretary, and a new member, Anton Monroe, who is a member and a teacher at the Salvation Army School for the Blind. Um, I want to appreciate the different uh, visually impaired associations. So we'll start with um, Jameen Brown, make sure that he's there. So he just give me some detailed information as to which community they belong to officially and the various associations of, of visually impaired that exists in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Um, Mr. Brown, are you there? Yes, I am. Good. So I, I know I, I was asked uh, a question last week right uh what's the difference i because i thought it was just one uh visually impaired society you know one organization is there only one organization organization or are there different groups in the bahamas okay so we are the bahamas alliance for the blind and visually impaired you broke up a little bit the game there also is another younger uh organization that deals with younger individuals. So we basically deal with adults, adult age people who can't find any means of assistance when it comes to being blind and visually impaired. They do have schools that attend to people who are of that age, but when you become an adult, you would then transfer over to the Bahamas Alliance to blind and visually impaired. Okay, I understand that. And where are you located? I, I, see, most persons, most people in the Bahamas is familiar with the School for the Blind at the Salvation Army. And I, I'm thinking, I'm understanding that you may be affiliated with, but you're not the same. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay, so we at present do not have a home. We are seeking a home, but we are connected to the Salvation Army and the Aaron Gilmore School for the Blind. Okay. So, I, you're a, okay, I'm starting from this point. So, bear with me as I try to ascertain the information for my listening audience so they can understand who you are no exactly, okay. right? Um, there is a Salvation for the Blind, uh, the Salvation School correct me the right name, um, that is located on Mackey Street and through that side corner there. What's the name of yeah. that institution? The name of the school is the Salvation Army Aaron Gilmore School for the Blind. So Salvation Army Aaron Gilmore School for the Blind. Yes. Okay. And after you've completed that uh, educational process, you were saying that your organization has been cre have been created for adults, matured persons yep. who yep. need extra assistance uh, in terms of um, um, taking care of themselves, uh, making themselves um, have abilities to work, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, when I became blind, I found that there wasn't other than the Bahamas Alliance, there wasn't any areas that you can go to learn how to 
adjust to your blindness other than coming through the Bahamas Alliance through the blind. And we starting with uh, contacts. Last week, I had another person say, but um, I'm not familiar with you all, but they want to join. They want to link up. They want to be a part of your association. What type of contacts and um, that they can contact you with? I want to start off with that to get these information out. Okay, so we have our organization has, an, has, a, has a cell number. Uh, the number is 80BABVI. Bavi or 802-2284. Or you can contact us via email at info at babvi.org. Or you can uh, contact us on Facebook, on our Facebook page at B-A-B-V-I Bahamas. That's Bavi Bahamas. It's Bahamas Alliance for the blind and visually impaired Bahama on Facebook. Odd question, and, and, and Mr. President, forgive me for this question, but who monitors these, the web page and uh, email address and oh. even answer the telephone? Okay, so the telephone will be monitored by either myself or one of the secretaries and our public relations person, who is Mr. Dario Charlton, our first vice president, he monitors the Facebook page. And again, forgive me for the question, is Dario visually impaired Charlton. also? Charlton uh, visually impaired also? Yes, he is. And I am completely blind as well. And you're doing all these things by yourself? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> this is why we, we, have, we are bringing this awareness to people. Because a lot of people feel like, how is it possible that we are able to do these things? Come to the organization. We'll show you just how easy it is. I is what when I WhatsApp and text. Yeah, we text too. We can text too. <laughs> just, just text. I can send you a word of text right now. I can give my number just to test it. No, <laughs> but no. Go, go, let's, go. No let's, go let's go. Let's go on. <laughs> no, I'm I'm impressed and I'm flattered to know <laughs> that you are self sufficient. And then yes, and there are a number of behemoths. I'm sure to say, okay, oh God, there. are you're blind, that means I have to take care of you. There's no way for you to take care of yourselves. And just to hear that you, visually impaired persons run an entire organization and they interact with people, and forgive me for this word, normally, right? And just need opportunity and just need the behemoth people to engage them. And you'll see that they, they're able to qualify and, 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 and participate. That's something I I needs to the, my listening audience needs to hear, and the general Bahamas needs to know and be aware of. I I think I, I yes. would also like for them to know that we are simple everyday individuals, and the mm-hmm. only difference between us and you is the fact that you can see a little bit better than we can. That's the only difference. Yeah. We can do things just as ordinary people, but just in a different in a different way. Right. Um, we're we're like everybody else. We can um, send emails out, order I order stuff online all the time. Um, I I do a whole TikTok group. We can do everything, but it's just that we do it in a different format. But we can do anything as a normal human being because we are normal. All of us are normal. Everybody is differently able. Everybody has different you know disabilities and different stuff in life, but we just do it in different ways, in different formats. That's, that's all it is. And that's Whitney, or who is speaking just now. Yeah. We heard <laughs> that of her story uh, last week, and, I, and I'll maybe just go on to that also. You mentioned TikTok, social media. I'm a social media person, right? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I want to hear more about that and your organization. How do you all use TikTok uh, to promote um of visually impairedness, being blind, education, how do you use that Uh, from a visually impaired point of view, I guess? Um, We're working on our TikTok page now as we speak on um, creating it and um, building building it up. And then we're going to go forward with um, every event we do, even with accessibility, with um, learning the computers and learning the phones, even coping with life to others around the world and the Bahamas, 
we're going to post that so that people can people can see that you can come on down and you can learn and you could be able to do different things no matter what situation or what blindness or what you're dealing with in today's world but we're working on that but with tiktok i'm on tiktok and i do tiktok all the time i like to do tiktoks it's fun you choose to on tiktok though instagram everything i'm a tiktok girl is correct <laughs> um and and it's great to hear right yeah. and i i'm 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 i want again my listening audience to be aware of you right um yeah. and i i'm forgive me for this question too there are times that i do not see you I know that there are visually impaired people in the Bahamas, but mm-hmm. I tend to cast a blind eye that you do not exist in order for me mm-hmm. to get along. What, do you, what can you do to make me and others see you, that you are here, that you um, are just differently abled, but you are here? Hence our campaign on blindness awareness. We have, so far, we've reached out to the commissioner in terms of working on a project to make sure that people are aware of some of the road safety habits when it comes to people of the blind and visually impaired community to see them. I mean, because, like you say, a lot of people tend to not see us and try to like scurry on bus, but we want people to know that we, we do exist. And this is why we are campaigning so much for people to understand what it is that we face on a daily basis. Uh, the school right now is, the Aaron Gilmore School right now is pushing a venture that they're working on and Mr. Munro, along with Miss Edwards, I think should be on the line. They are teachers at the institute, and Mr. Edwards is one of the most one of the most efficient trainers that we have right now when it comes to computers as well as any uh, technological devices that we may use. He is one of the most efficient trainers that we have right now. And the Mr. Yeah. Oh, and, and Mr. Murner's online also? Yes, yeah, sir. Here. Good. So I want to talk about this, right? I'm thinking now you're a young adult, right? 16, 17, about to graduate from the school, right? And I, I want to know how is that educational process uh, in terms of transitioning from high school into adulthood, independence, uh, learning these tech-savvy tools, what is done at the school or the institution or the various institutions to prepare persons who are visually impaired? Swipe with two fingers open. Disabled. Swipe with two fingers open. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes, yes sir. So I am Antoine Mundo, and... Uh, as was said, I am one of the instructors here at the Aaron Gilmore Salvation Army, Aaron Gilmore School for the blind and visually impaired, for the blind and visually impaired. Um, what I teach is what we call the Curriculum Plus uh, subjects. The, the Curriculum Plus subjects include Braille, assistive technology, which uh, encompasses the computer with a special software called JAWS. And just just a little bit about JAWS. JAWS is a screen reader. And that means that it's an app that reads information aloud to the person who is blind or visually impaired. So once JAWS is installed on any computer system, and some people believe that it has to be a special computer. But once JAWS is installed on any uh, computer system, um, a person who is blind or visually impaired can use the computer just like uh, any, any other person. Um, also, uh, I teach uh, different um, apps, uh, one of them, is talk back 
And TalkBack is mainly used with Android phones and also VoiceOver, which is used with the iPhone. And so once uh, students are equipped with the knowledge of how to use uh, these different um, tech, tech, technological stuff, um, they can operate just like any other uh, individual. So that's what I do here at the school. To the um, Mr. Munro, who pays for that? Like right now, my Microsoft Office <laughs> is about to be expired. Say November, I mean, October 26. And I'm trying to reinstate that, right? <laughs> to make sure I get access to Microsoft Word. You call all of these programs. Who pays for that? Mm -hmm. Well, um, let me say that anything, any device, any software that are used by persons with disabilities is very, very costly. Oh, God. And the Salvation Army, in partnership with the Ministry of Education, ensures that the school has what it needs. So, like how you put the program on a computer, and I assume everybody have their own laptop right. or whatever it is. Um, with part, you're saying that with partnership with the Ministry of Education, I didn't even know that the Ministry of Education, I assume that now, um, is involved with the Center for the, for the Blind, right? For the blind, yes. They, yes. they, they um, pay whatever they got to pay uh, and, and support whatever, how they support and make sure that the tools are there for, for the young adults, children who is attending the school? That's correct. Yes, yes, sir. That's good to know. That's good to know. Um, in terms of, and I know you're not in, in, in management, right, at, at the school, but in terms of the organization of the, the running of the institution, the school itself, um, that the Ministry of Education has a division for blind people? Well, the school, um, the, the, the Ministry of Education um, employs the majority of the teachers here at the school. Um, the Salvation Army um, also employs teachers, but um, at the moment, the Ministry of Education has the, the greater number. Um, uh, at the moment, we also have a principal who is blind as well. Monroe, are you blind? Uh, yes, I'm totally blind. Complete. Okay. Yes. What about Miss Edwards? Miss Edwards on the on the on the on the Zoom link too. Um. Miss Edwards isn't. <laughs> She's she, not, she isn't on. Okay, I just want to know if she's there. I just want to include her in. I just want to make sure that she's not there. Um, so how many teachers does the school have? And how many students does it average? Um, on average, um, we have about 12 students and about 10, 10 11 uh, staff members. And typically, the students um, who are there, are there students who born blind or they, it's like some accident happened and then they have to relearn things? Well, we have a mix. Okay. We have a mix. Um, we also have what we call multi-challenge students as well. And that means that um, they have more than... Uh, do they have um, modern blindness? Uh, we have students that are blind and autistic, um, students that are blind and uh, have limited use of their limbs. Uh, so yeah, that would be called we call them. We have an area that we that we put them. Uh, not not trying to, to to separate them from the from the, the rest of the, the population, but just so that they can get the right uh, sort of um, education. Uh, I appreciate noting that. I, I never considered about, that yeah. there would be um, multi um, issues at the school too. And that yeah, the school, what, say the right word again, I'm sorry. 
multi challenge Mul multi challenges and that the schools uh specializes and make sure that everyone have the appropriate uh type of education I, I i was not aware um if bohemians want to help do we all need bohemians wider audience assistance from us in general well definitely we encourage that um definitely we encourage that and that's uh that's why today we have asked um, the alliance to allow us to to join with them, uh, so that we can talk about our upcoming uh, open house, uh, which we uh, will be hosting on the seventeenth of November, right here at the school, beginning at nine a.m. And we are encouraging all to come down and see what happens here at the school. Uh, one of the purposes of the open house, though, is to increase our school's uh, population, student population, really, uh, because we, we realize that a number of persons in our, quote-unquote, uh, public educational system could utilize the services here at the school. So um, we thought it necessary to have an op one of many uh, open houses. We thought it necessary to have this one uh, just to, to uh, ensure that persons out there in the wider public have, have knowledge about what goes on here at the school. Uh, during our last conversation, I, I, I found out that with Alliance, I found out that there are a number of visually impaired people who are not acquainted or are not involved with any type of visually impaired association, no network group, groupings at all. They, mm -hmm. They're home living their, their lives, right? right. Um, and they're not aware that these organizations exist and, that, and they, they're not aware on how they can fit um, into these organizations. What are you doing to promote that, to let them be aware that, yeah, you can come this way. Well, this is, this is, um, I'm happy you said that, but I, I would like to hear, um, encourage radio stations like you guys to help us out in spreading the information um, that we are here to assist those who are blind or visually impaired and even by extension persons with disabilities on the whole. Um, because we understand the challenges uh, that persons um, that, that persons face, and so uh, I think it's more for us to do more education awareness out there uh, to let people know uh, that we are here and we are willing uh, to assist you. Um, I I hear you. And I, like I said, I've, I'm acquainted with one or two persons who are visually impaired. They're totally blind, actually. Mm -hmm. But getting to Markey Street on top of that hill could be a challenge, <laughs> right? Right? It's a challenge for me walking up there with the traffic and whatever it is. How are you gonna get my people living uh -huh. up there? Well, uh, that that is where that that is where um, uh, technology comes in. Um, we all are very uh, efficient on WhatsApp. We are all are very efficient on Facebook. Um, um, we call the phone our best friend. Pause. Uh, no, 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 stop, <laughs> stop, stop. How are you active on yeah. Facebook? Because I know Facebook. I'm on Facebook every day. How are you? <laughs> Lord have mercy. How are you all well, active on Facebook? I try to visualize that. It's simple. Okay. It's simple. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. With, with, with the talkback feature, it allows us the opportunity to scroll on Facebook. The phone will read whatever it is that we touch on the screen. If there's a picture, normally, not all the time, now, most of the time, it, descri it describes the picture and says the person is standing up with sunglasses, with flowers in the background, with a dress on or a shirt on. Um, that, that's how our phone talks to us and let us know exactly what it is that's on the screen. So that's how we're able to tell what's happening uh, on Facebook or every other 
WhatsApp or whatever it is, when it comes to pictures and in terms of whatever we are reading, whatever we touch on the screen, the screen will read back to us whatever it is. Nice. Now, what about... Yeah, yeah so it goes... Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go ahead. So it goes, it goes back to um, what I was saying earlier. And uh, once uh, people are equipped and uh, knowledgeable about the various uh, apps that we use as persons with disabilities, they can function just like any other person. There is a feature uh, that allows um, for picture recognition that is in the, the voice over um, uh, setting. And so uh, it just, it just, uh, I just wanted to say that once, once we are equipped and knowledgeable as persons with disabilities about um, apps and uh, the software that, that are out there, uh, we can, we can function. Um, there, there, go ahead. There is an app. There is an app. Uh, it's called Envision AI. That's the name of the app, right, Mr. Mano? You yes. can, um, you can, where you can open the Envision AI, and a person answers and will tell you what the word is you're pointing your phone at, even if it's to help you with directions. Uh, they have people on the next line that will help you in that regard. That's how much technology has changed and advanced right now. You're saying that the phone can give you directions so you can, you can no, travel? There's, actual, there's an actual person that you will talk to. On the phone? Once yes. The, 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 name of, the name of that the name of that app is Be My Eyes. Be My Eyes, right. And that works in, in Nassau? Oh, be My Eyes works. Be My Eyes. And that works how, in Nassau? Be My Eyes. Hi? Does it work in Nassau, New Providence? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Um, so how it works is that you are connected. It's just like a, a, a telephone call, but uh, it, it's, it's better than that. So you are connected to a live person that can assist you with tasks, um, whether it is that you are trying to do something around your home or uh, you want a particular document that you cannot scan at the time to, to, to be read, uh, a number of things. You want to check the label on uh, grocery items. Uh, yeah, so a whole host of, of stuff. So what if I'm visually impaired and I'm home, but I'm not a part of any organization, I didn't go to the school for the blind, right? Um, but I won't have access to these programs, these initiatives. Um, what, do I, what, what do I need to do? to get connected? Well, we do private visits as well. Um, we can come to your home and we can uh, work with you from your home. Um, um, or if you would like, we, we, we can organize where you can come out of your home and work in a, in a, in a, uh, in a space that is comfortable for you. Okay, so back to um, Jermaine and Whitney in terms of the Bahamas Alliance for the Blind. I'm thinking of social activities, not mm -hmm. being home uh, in the dark, right? <laughs> um, I, I, places go out and socialize. Oh, Does yes. that exist? Yes, we do. Um, this, especially this weekend, we're having on Saturday, um, blue and white mask off. Ravi game night Saturday at Stephen Dillett Primary School. So we're having an event for the for the blind and visually impaired. Um, this what, this Saturday on the twenty eighth. What, what type of event is it again? It's a blue and white mask of Ravi family game night. So people gotta wear blue and white. Yeah, yeah sure. team blue and team white. <laughs> and. How is We're going to have game tourn play? Tourn tourn tournaments and games, um, family feud, just a couple games. So you, 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 have not, you have not played dominoes until you've gotten beaten up from somebody I, who can't. I, 
I plan, I plan to come to Bina Pony all. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, I don't play when it comes to Dominoes. <laughs> I, 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 I would say you're going to be beat by a blind person, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to come out there, too, to show you like how technique and skills. And I, I, I should be at an advantage. Come, come on down, come on down so we can catch up with some Dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> Your Dominoes have Braille on it? How do you know? No, it's a regular Dominoes. Yeah, it's regular Dominoes. And you yours win? Just, um, so we just feel it. We just feel the dots on it. With the, mm-hmm. the dots that are indented into the domino, we just feel those. Okay. Okay. Tell me more about that. Which, when, which day is this? Where, when, which time? And this is on Saturday. Um, this is Saturday. Be, uh, this yeah, Saturday? Be, uh, yes. Yes, this Saturday. Saturday. Uh, Stephen Dillard Primary. Primary. Be right in their auditorium um, for our family and friends. And if, um, we are partnering with uh Toastmaster. Toastmasters. Um, they are as well a disabled friendly Toastmasters group that comprise of mostly mostly blind individuals, but as well as wheelchair bound, as well as amputees. And we will all be partnering and we will have a game night. Um, we'll be familiarizing ourselves with new members as well as people who are just interested in learning. Because we have some classes prepared. We are preparing some classes for our members. We are restarting our classes for our members who are still not as as ready for the, uh, the phones. Some of them know the phones, but they need a little bit more help in that regard. So we are starting those classes again real soon. As well as computer classes will be on stream coming again real soon. I'm impressed that you'll have so many activities. My, my mm-hmm. show have regular people who are visually impaired who calls calls all the time. So I know they're active. They, but I think they have the numbers saved. But now that you know that there are phones and technology that can make them more independent, that there are there's a game night happening uh, on Saturday. Right, that they can come yeah. out and, and be active. Um, there's right. an open house. Which day is the open house again? At the school. Anton? Right. Yes, the open house is on November 17th. November 17th. November 17th. And like, I said, like you said, we start at 9 a.m. and we end at 1 p.m. And we're inviting um, members of the general public, and also corporate Bahamas. If you want to come on down and support, um, come on down. Let's talk about corporate Bahamas for a minute. What do you want Uh corporate Bahamas to do exactly, to make them aware that that you're there, but you need, what type of assistance can corporate Bahamas assist you with? Well, uh, um, as I said earlier, Devices for persons or software for persons with disabilities are very costly. Yes, the Salvation Army and the Ministry of Education does what um, they can. But of course, uh, a helping hand is always welcome. Uh, So technology is advancing every day. And so we could always use the help in terms of getting new software or new devices um, to keep up to date um, with the times. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Go ahead. That, that, goes, that goes for both organizations as well, Mr. Nuri, because we also train uh, people who are new to blindness, especially people who are new to blindness, who have no idea how to get back into their everyday. Because when I became new to blindness, it was difficult for me to answer the phone or use the phone anymore. And I had to learn all that over again, how to use the talk back, as well as my tablet, as well as my laptop, as well, even my TV. My TV uh, as well has talk back feature on it. So when I uh, turn on my TV and use the buttons to do things, it will actually say what I'm pressing and everything on my, in my TV as well. That's nice. Um, when does the Bahamas Alliance for Blind meet in terms of a, a weekly or monthly meetings? Okay, so we have monthly meetings, all right? Um, quarterly, we will meet 
in person, in person meetings, but we have monthly meetings where we mostly do Zoom, but we do quarterly meetings in person as well as other ventures in terms of fundraisers, in terms of uh, outreach. Just this Saturday past, we were, if you check our Facebook page, we were at the Elizabeth Estates Children's Home talking to them about blindness and visually and visual impairments, as well as showing them that we have members in our organization who still work and who do stuff. And we had a training lesson with some of the students, say, who are interested in learning how to use the DJ equipment and stuff like that. So they had fun on Saturday Pass learning how to use the equipment and playing music as well. You mentioned that you have members who still work. work yes, sir. Work doing what? Okay, so uh, like Mr. Monroe and Ms. Edwards, they are both professional teachers. Uh, we have members who work in the Salvation Army Mob Factory. We have members who are visually impaired uh, who still uh, go to office, go offices. We have people in government and the Attorney General's Office and social services and different areas who work. That's their profession. Even it, we had members in accounting as well. <laughs> Believe it or not. No, I my, myself, I'm, I'm proud to know that our government make, uh, <laughs> make space, make an effort, make sure to include you, um, especially at government offices. I, I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Uh, and yeah. I'm mean, hopefully encouraging them to make more space. But how how does a person who's visually impaired be prepared <laughs> to get on government job? Uh, well, like Mr. Mano said, with training with the, with the devices. Now, if you have knowledge before you started losing your sight, it, you are an ad, ad, an, you are an at an advantage. But if you have training before you started to lose your sight. But we still have education that we can learn. There's still ways that you can educate yourself in terms of online learning as well as uh, you can. For people who are just visually impaired, they can still go to school. But it's just the way that they learn will be slightly different in terms of technology. They will use more technology to gain their experiences to get where they need to get in, in, in education. Um, and we, yeah, we as an organization try to help you in that regard in terms of training with the devices that you would need and advancing yourself with the devices. Um, an odd question. And I, okay. I remember I, I asked... Um, Miss Miss Adley, Whitney Adley, this before, but I didn't ask uh, uh, you, Mr. President, Jameen Brown, and of course now that I have Mr. Monroe on, I ask him the same question. Just for the listening audience to be conscious, um, how old are you? I am forty-six. You're mad, I'm okay? 40. Yeah. <laughs> okay, forty-six-year-old man. Okay. Yeah. And and you are Mr. Monroe. Um, I am thirty-seven. Young man. Okay. Okay. I just want I just want to get a sense of who I talking to, you know, and, and, and sense of what all you all accomplishing at 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 this age. Um, another peculiar question: Do you mind telling your your story briefly? Because there's, there's two of you now uh, on how did you lose your sight? Just so people be conscious again. And would you like Mr. Manor to go first? Or you my you tell, to tell me, and then you start, and I show him one person will go quiet okay. and, and, and go ahead. Right. I, I'll go first, then. I lost my sight uh, because of diabetic retinopathy. I'm a diabetic, and I did not take care of myself that I should have, and it, be, it caused me to lose my sight, along with some other things. Um... I found myself being faced with my blindness, my blind challenge, 
in the year 2015, 2016, I lost my sight completely. Wait, you were type 2 diabetes, diabetic? No, type 1, type oh, 1, okay. type 1. But I found out I was type 1 at the age of 18. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't lose my sight until the until the year. Like, I started to lose my sight from far at first. Mm-hmm. From the end about 2014 and going into 2015. And then at the end of 2016, my sight was completely gone after operations and yeah, other stuff. Uh, and before I go to Mr. Munro, was those operations expensive? Because you see, but, but I'm type 2 diabetes, right? Diabetic, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. one of the first things when I start taking my med- medication is I couldn't see with my glasses anymore. All the sights start <laughs> diminishing. I got scared there for a bit. I got scared there for a bit, right? And especially in, in, in a country where we have a, a, a di- diabetes problem. Mm-hmm. And hearing your story that you can lose your sight. This is real. This ain't, this, this ain't no play, play thing. Right, right. Uh, I'm trying to remind people that diabetes is a serious thing, right? And yeah. dealing with your sight loss. Okay, okay. so me, me, just like you, uh, I figured I was getting older, so that's probably why my sight was diminishing from far first. And I got, you know, so I, I just took it as, hey, I probably need to get glasses. Soon, soon, or something like that. But all the time, that's what it was. My, my, that my eyes were becoming deteriorating from the back. All right. So when you see yourself faced with that, those kind of things, it could be that you need glasses because of age difference, or it could be you need glasses because of you using devices. But it's always great to get your eyes checked at least one to two times a year. At least one to two times a year. And that's why I, I, a lot of people tend to let it slide. And, you know, they'd be like, oh, I could do that. I don't know. So we end up finding ourselves in situations. And with, I did the, I went to the government system. So it took a while. Uh, I still have a bill, <laughs> but I also went to the U.S. and I went to Bascom Palmer, and it was it was it was costly, the operations, but uh, that's when I got my final well not my final but my second to final uh, results when it came to my eyes and yeah, but it is it is costly. Miss um, Miss Miss Whitney, I think she spoke to. The price that it costs. She was huge, but she's still packing on. My lord. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think she spoke to her, but it is, it is, it is extremely costly. Um, what it costs for you to visit a private doctor to be seen quicker than it is to go through the government system, it, it's in the thousands. It's in the thousands. Mr. Monroe, oh. go ahead with your story. Well, um, my story is definitely uh, different from Mr. Brown's story because I, but my, the loss, my, my, I lost my sight because of an accident at birth. Um, my mom had an accident and it affected my eyes and my sight deteriorated over time. But at the age of 10, 11, I was totally blind. But for me, um, my transition from being able to see to blindness was um, very smooth because the doctors knew that eventually at, at some point I would have been blind. So they advised my, my mom to uh, enroll me at the school for the blind at the age of five years old. And so once that happened, and I was assessed. Uh, I started off reading what they call large print. And then, of course, eventually went going uh, to Braille. And your story is different because you, you were a little bit younger. Um, both Miss right. yes. um, uh, Adley and Mr. Brown was 
basically uh, a teenager scaring on to adulthood when they lost their, their vision. Uh, as a 10-year-old going through challenges, um, making friends, having friends at school, because I don't know 10, you're supposed to be rambunctious, you, you're playing karate, you're running up <laughs> and down, right? Um, your life journey into manhood. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, that, um, that was, that was challenging, um, because I, I mean, I stop now, but I used to, I used to question God and say, what, well, why me? Why I am the one that you choose to be blind? Um, and then having to, to, um, deal with persons who don't have much knowledge about blindness and they call you names like uh, cross eye and uh, a number of stuff as a, as a, as a, as a child or as a teenager, that wasn't easy for me. Um, but I, I had to, I had to, um, encourage myself. And that's why I like to use the, 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 the um, scripture. Um, I think it's a verse that, that, um, was written by Paul, and he said, in whatever state I find myself in, I will be content. But definitely, I had to grow into that. It was not, at first, very easy. Because uh, you could imagine persons uh, calling you all sorts of names. Uh, just because they are ignorant, they don't, they, don't, they don't have the knowledge, you know. And I appreciate for you for sharing that story. And, and just so more people can understand and appreciate what's happening. Um, Miss um, Adley, make sure she's there when she tune in, because I'm going to ask her one question if I may. Right? Being a hi. T- hi. Being a, I've seen pictures of you. You're pretty girl. Not, 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 not just average. I mean, pretty, 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 pretty. Right? Thank you. <laughs> no, no, not for the question, man. That, no, I'm not. <laughs> Watch my wife call me now. Right? But no. <laughs> I'm saying that, right, being a young woman, right, who is dealing with blindness, right, how is the dating scene for you? Because I know the last conversation, you said, yeah, you, you hope to get married, you hope, you hope to have children, et cetera, et cetera, right? And um, I'm thinking now, how does that happen? And forgive me for that that blunt type of question. I, I again, I just want people to get a sense of living. It's fine. Um, the dating stage, I won't say it's hard because you you get men that talk to you all the time, try to get to know you, wants to get to know you. It's just that finding someone that has true intentions. Um, I was in a long-term relationship, um, so it isn't that dating is hard for me. It isn't hard for me, but it's just me finding someone that I truly connect to connect with, and someone that I know truly has has his best interest in me, and wanting me not wanting me for me, and knowing that with me comes with challenges. But I saw that he would have his own challenges as well. It's just ad- ad- adapting to life, so. The dating scene isn't hard because I don't have a problem with the dating scene. <laughs> but it's just me finding somebody that has true intention, that is really genuine, God fearing and loving, that I really look for. So I pray and I wait, you know, but hopefully soon. Just soon. soon. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Um, and I will be married, so I will. Invite me. So. I'm going to invite you to my Because I like, I like cake. A lot of cake. Um, but my doctor always said, no, you can't be eating cake. Because it's high diabetic. But I like cake. So do invite me. But uh, as we... Go ahead. Mary, I'll say this, though. Uh, I, I've come to find out that uh, as blind individuals, what you get to see in the person first is their heart. Before you see anything, you truly get to see the heart of a person before you see anything else. That's good. I like that. I won't say, like, as a, a visually impaired a lady, that I don't have my insecurities. I don't feel like I'm a burden because every time, even in my past relationship, where I always ask, Am I a burden? Am I a burden? 
and it's always telling me that I'm not. Because when you, when you, sometimes when you deal with a situation, sometimes you feel like because you need them to carry you places, um, because you cannot drive, it's um, it's it's it probably might be heavy for them, or because you need them to hold your hand and be like step up or step coming or to step down, it'd be like a little task for them, but. You, I had to realize I have to feel in sure of myself mm -hmm. and know that yeah. I am worthy, that I am worth it, that I am beautiful. There and and forget me, they get a true gem, they get a true <laughs> dime, mm -hmm. and they walking on the side of the most beautiful woman on go. the side of them. Okay. <laughs> well, we have a few more minutes, and I, I want to remind persons of all activities that you have prepared for this month and next month, right? So you, this is your, this your chance now to invite, say who is your target audience, uh, times and places, phone numbers, all of that again. Okay, okay. like um, for the Blindness Awareness Game Night, we're having Saturday. Do you mean, do you mind me talking about it? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, on the 28th at 6 p.m., we're having um, Blue and White Mask Off Family Game Night. And it's going to be held, like we said, Stephen... Stephen Dillard Primary School Auditorium at 6 p.m. Um, with blind and visually impaired disabled, come on and come enjoy yourself. We have raffle tickets, grabbing the bag. Just come on down and enjoy yourself. Domino games, family food, and different other games. Surprises and prizes for the blind. Oh, the prizes too. Yeah, that's for dominoes because I plan. I mean, I, I, I since I have advantage, I, I plan to come and win. Oh, you can do it. I can, I can, I can chance my chance. I can take my chances. I can take my chances. Okay, I'll take your chances then. Definitely. <laughs> go ahead with the next activity. What else is happening? Okay, so me and you go next. Okay, so along with that, uh, up and coming next month, we will be having another online forum. Online next month is Diabetes Month. So we as an organization will be putting off a diabetic forum for our blind, uh, anyone who is blind and visually impaired. We have a doctor lined up, we have dietitians lined up to speak to us about diabetes and how it affects blindness. So feel free to, we will be sending out flyers for people to join us online so they can learn a little bit more. And we plan to have a a uh, a uh, doctor's office to attend who is going to work with us in terms of financial help in that regard as well. Uh, they should be online with us to speak about their services that they'll be rendering as well. Okay. So look out for the, look out for our flyer, and we will be out. We will make sure that. That you get a flyer as well, Mr. Nuri. Okay. So, um, Monroe, you have 30 seconds to talk about your open house. 30 seconds. Monroe, there? Okay. Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. I had a charge it. Go ahead. Okay. So, I just want to um, ask or, or remind the general public of our open house, which is the 17th of November. You can call us here at the school. 394-3197. You can ask for myself or you can ask for Miss Anika Edwards uh, uh, if you have any questions or you want to find out more information. Okay, thank you very much. This has been Garden Radio with C.A. Nuri and we had online today Jermaine Brown, who's the president of the Bahamas Alliance for the Blind. We had Miss Whitney Adderley, who's assistant secretary for that organization. And of course, Mr. Anton Monroe, who is the teacher at the School for the Blind. And have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too.